Good nutrition is essential for health, survival and reproduction. Human requires 44 noun nutrients inadequate amount and consistently to live healthy and reproductive and productive life. The known essential nutrients for human life are enlisted here. It includes oxygen, water, carbohydrates, major proteins, lipids, fats, micronutrients, essential trace elements and vitamins. Micronutrient malnutrition Billions of people in resource-poor families in developing countries suffer from an insidious form of hunger known as micronutrient malformation or malnutrition. The major nutrients responsible for micronutrient malnutrition are iron, zinc, iodine and vitamin A. Let us see the global status of malnutrition. In the world, around 2 billion people suffer from malnutrition. 795 million people are undernourished. Less than 5 year old children, around 155 million are stunted, while 52 million are wasted and 17 million are severely wasted. Malnutrition contributes to loss of 11% GDP in Asia and Africa. Coming to 2016 data, more than half of all stunted children under 5 lives in Asia and more than one third lives in Africa. The percent percentage of stunted children under 5 year age group in Asia is 56% and in Africa it is 38%. In 2016 almost half of the overweight children under 5 lived in Asia and the quarter lived in Africa. The percentage is 49% in Asia and 24% in Africa. The wasted children under 5 are 69% in Asia and 27% in Africa according to UNICEF WHO data. This is a graphical representation of undernourished people across the world, Asia and uh, different groups. Different deficiency symptoms of the nutrients responsible for malnutrition. First one is iron. It causes anemia in infants, children, adolescents and especially in the pregnant women. Severe anemia in women cause death and death during childbirth. It impairs mental development and learning capacity in children and adolescent. It reduces the ability to do physical labor in adults. The zinc leads to growth retardation, delayed sexual and bone maturation, diarrhea, impaired appetite, increased susceptibility to infection mediated via defects in the immune system and severe form of zinc deficiency lead to short stature, hypogonadism, impaired immune function, skin disorders, cognitive dysfunction and anorexia. Vitamin A deficiency causes night blindness, keratomalacia, subsequent inflammation and infection causing irreversible blindness. Growth retardation and reproductive disorders easily exposed to measles, diarrhea and respiratory disorders. The loss of GDP due to malnutrition, the Indian scenario is US billions, 12, uh, around 12 billion per year GDP loss can be found through malnutrition. The sustainable development goals are set in every country in order to avoid different problems which occur subsequently. At Global Community, committed to a new set of objectives in 2015, it includes 17 goals and the, it anchored the Global Development Agenda till 2013. Core is to eliminate extreme poverty, hunger and malnutrition. 
12 out of 17 goals indicators related to malnutrition. According to IFPRI 2016, the second most important goal of sustainable development is hunger and malnutrition irradiation. Coming to biofortification, it is development of nutrient dense stable crop using the best conventional breeding practices and modern biotechnology without sacrificing agronomic performance and important consumer preferred traits. How biofortified crops include food and nutritional security? Comparing with the conventional or non biofortified crops, Biofortified crops have better agronomic characters that leads to greater yield, resistant to pest, tolerant to stress, increase in food availability in homes and improved food security. Then higher nutritional concentration it leads to more zinc, iron, beta carotene and tryptophan with lysine. It leads to increased intake of nutrients and improve nutritional security. With this, the goal of nutrient security aims with the new micronutrients like protein, lysine, tryptophan, provitamin A, vitamin C, anthocyanin, reducing glucosinolate and erosic acid in mustard, fortification or improving iron and zinc. Harvest Plus uh, is one of the major leading uh, organization which is uh, aiming at increasing the or uh, improving the nutrient contents in the food crops along with all the global CGIAI IAR institutes. Agriculture must now focus on the new paradigm that will now not only produce more food but bring us better quality food as well. This was termed the biofortification was termed by Welch and Gray Hall in uh, 2004 to refer the increasing bioavailable micronutrient content of food crops through genetic manipulation via plant breeding. Advantages of biofortification It targets the poor, poor who eat high levels of food staples. A food based intervention, biofortification uses the very staple uh, staples that the poor are already eat, uh, eating to deliver the micronutrients to them. Therefore, biofortified foods are more easily integrated into the livelihood and diets of the poor. Second is, it is rural based. It is an agriculture intervention targeted at rural area where more than 75% of the poor live and where access to supplements, fortified foods and other urban based interventions are limited. Third is cost effectiveness. A one-time in investment in breeding biofortified crops would provide micronutrients far more cost effectively than through conventional means that have high recurrent cost. The biofortified crops are self-sustainable in that the biofortified seeds can be grown year after year. Demonstrated effect of uh, biofortified crops the case studies says iron biofortified rice the study was done in 2005 that increased 20 percent storage iron in non-anemic women of reproductive age group in philippines beta carotene biofortified sweet potato this study was done by low in 2007 and uh, during 2005 also this reduced 37 percent preschool children's with vitamin A deficiency and improved by 10% storage vitamin A in school age children in South Africa. In the third case study conducted during 2010 by Gunaretna, lysine and tryptophan biofortified maize that is QPM improved children's growth by 9 to 12% the studies done in Latin America and Africa. The last one is zinc fortified wheat that was done by Rosado in 2009 
improved zinc absorption by 33% in women of reproductive age in Mexico. To improve the bio uh, fortify, fortify the nutrients or for achieving the biofortification, different crops are selected but not all the crops are targeted. The only crops which are selected are which can be easily affordable to the farmers or poor people. Phase 1 crops are rice, wheat, maize, cassava, sweet potato, beans and pearl millet. Phase 2 crops are potato, sorghum, banana or plantain, lentils and groundnut. This is a world preference. Coming to India, the selected crops are rice for fortifying iron, zinc, provitamin A and protein, iron and zinc in wheat, iron, zinc, provitamin A and protein in maize, iron and zinc in pearl millet, iron and sor uh, uh, zinc in sorghum, then iron and zinc in small millets. Prerequisites for biofortification are availability of sufficient genetic variability within the gene pool of the species and a relative stability of the trait across various edific environments and climatic zones. Biofortified crop varieties are developed by breeding using selective breeding. In selective breeding programs, search for variation in the characteristic of interest example higher iron content within existing varieties of the crop this characteristic is then bred into cultivated varieties by crossing and selecting these individual plants with the desired characters in selective breeding scientists used seed bank and wide crosses the seed bank is collection of seeds usually collected in the past which may have greater genetic variation than current varieties. The wide crosses are interbreeding between cultivated species and another normally closely related species. Example, sufficient variability for grain micronutrient density is not available in the cultivated germplasm of wheat, but wild species show a wide range. Wild species showed wide variation for iron and zinc. Here it is given clearly the progenitors or the ABD genome progenitors of wheat are pure poor in these micronutrients but triticum boiticum, triticum monococcum, dicocoides, agilops toshi and agilops speltoides have wider range of grain micronutrient density. In broad terms, three things must happen in biofortification to be successful are breeding must be successful. For this, high nutrient density must be combined with high yield and high profitability. Efficiency must be demonstrated. The micronutrient status of human subjects must be shown to improve when consuming the biofortified cultivars as normally eaten. Thus. Sufficient micronutrients must be retained in processing and cooking and these nutrients must be sufficiently bioavailable. Biofortified crops must be adapted and consumed. It means consumer preference is most required or most preferred. Options which are uh, wasted path to purpose. Plant breeders uh, could breed for genotypes that contain lower concentration of anti-nutrients. Molecular biologists could alter plant genes in ways that reduce or even eliminate my anti-nutrients from plant food meals. Some promoter compounds are normal plant metabolites. Only a few genes control their levels in plants and only small changes in their concentrations may have significant effect. Breeding for increased level of these promoters should be relatively easy compared to breeding for higher level of iron and zinc which involve numerous genes and their interactions with the environment. Plant breeders and molecular biologists closely 
scrutinized the strategy of increasing promoter substances in food crops when attempting to improve food crops as source of micronutrient for people. Rest of the techniques and modern techniques like genome editing and transgenics also enhance the conventional breeding approaches in order to develop the biofortified crops. Coming to a list of biofortified crops in India, first one is high zinc rice. DRR Dhan 45 is first high zinc variety notified in India. This is semi dwarf medium duration of 125 days for irrigated condition. It contains zinc percent uh, that is 24 ppm in polished rice recommended for Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka with a grain yield of 5.2 tons per hectare. The second one is Chhattisgarh zinc rice one. It contains 22 ppm zinc, 5 to 8 ppm more than Swarna and other popular rice varieties. This is selected for direct seeded, rain fed, aerobic, irrigated ecosystem of Chhattisgarh plains. Semi dwarf 95 to 100 centimeter height in nature and early maturity in 105 to uh, 110 uh, days. This has long bold grains. Protein. It has 9.02% protein plus 20.9 ppm zinc. Grain yield is 5.35 tons per hectare. Promising in West Bengal, Odisha, Punjab, Telangana and Kerala. It is in AVT 2 stage of AICRP. The next one is IAT24557 contains 26 ppm zinc and medium slender grain and also with 3 BLB resistant genes. IET24760 developed by Nizuvidu Seeds has 21 ppm zinc and flowering duration of 107 days. High protein rice CR than 310 and CR than 311 are having high protein content. In CR than 310 high yielding that is 4.5 tons per hectare with high means of protein content 10.3%. It is released by CVRC for Odisha UP MP on the basis of high protein and yield advan advantage over the checks IR64 and Samba Mysuri and notified in 2016. It has medium slender grain and well exerted protein. Note down the normal protein content in rice is 6 to 7 percent. In CR Dhan 311, that is Mukul, contains protein of 10.1 percent, moderate level of zinc 20 ppm, as reported by biofortification trial trials. Uh, grain types are long bold, yield of 4.33 tons per hectare at national level and 5.54 ton per hectare for Odisha, released by State Varietal Release Committee, Odisha in 2016. Coming to high uh, iron and zinc wheat, two varieties, uh, WB2 having high zinc of 42 ppm and iron, a 40 ppm with 12.4 percent protein average seed yield is 51.6 quintal or 5.16 tons per hectare maturity is 142 days resistant to yellow rust brown rust and highly resistant to powdery mildew this is recommended for irrigation timely sown conditions of northwestern plain zones next variety is php bw01 this is high zinc containing 40.6 ppm and iron content 40 ppm variety with 12.3 percent protein. Average seed yield is 5.17 tons per hectare. Maturity duration is 141 days. Resistant to yellow and brown rust and recommended for irrigated timely sown conditions of northwestern plain zones. High quality protein maize. There are four Hybrids which are improved for quality as well as different micronutrients. First one is Pusa HM4 improved. 
This is recommended for northwestern plain zone, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, Uttarakhand, UP western region. Characters are 0.91% tryptophan, 3.62% tryptophan, average grain yield is 6.4 tons per hectare and potential yield is 8.6 tons per hectare. Duration is 87 days for 75% dry husk. Uh, Again, is the <coughs> normal lysine content of 1.522% and 0.3 to 0.4% tryptophan in normal ways. Next is PUSA HM8 improved. This is recommended for peninsular zone. Uh, includes Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Tamil Nadu. Characters contains tryptophan 1.06, lysine 4.18, average grain yield is 6.2 tons per hectare, potential yield is 9.2 uh, tons per hectare and duration is 95 days. The third one is PUSA HM9 improved. This is recommended for northeastern plain zone including Bihar, Jharkhand, Orissa, Uttar Pradesh Eastern Region and West Bengal. It contains tryptophan 0.68%, lysine 2.97% and average yield of 5.2 tons per hectare and potential yield 7.4 tons per hectare with a duration 89 days. Pusa Vivek QPM 9 improved has it is a country's first provitamin A rich maize. High provitamin A content of 8.15 ppm, lysine 2.67% and tryptophan 0.74 as compared to 1 to 2 ppm provitamin A, 1.5 to 2% lysine and 0.3 to 0.4% tryptophan content in popular hybrids. The grain yield is 56 quintals per hectare or 5.6 tons per hectare in uh, northern hill zone and 5.9 tons per hectare in peninsular zone. Maturity is 93 days in northern uh, hill zone and peninsular zone is 83 days. Adaptation is for Karib season in Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, hilly region, northeastern states, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Tamil Nadu. This was developed by ICR IARA New Delhi. Coming to high iron pearl millet hybrids, the four improved hybrids. The first one is Dhan Shakti, uh, which has iron content of 71 ppm and zinc 40 ppm, recommended for Maharashtra, Karnataka, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, and Rajasthan. The source of cultivation is Karif and uh, grain yield is 2.21 tons per hectare. The second one is Shakti 1201 having iron content 75 ppm and zinc 40 ppm recommended for cultivation in Maharashtra and Rajasthan during Karif season with the grain yield 3.6 tons per hectare. The third important uh, pearl millet hybrid is HHB 299. This is biofortified pearl millet with high iron of 73 ppm and zinc of 41 ppm. Average grain yield is 3.3 uh, tons per hectare and dry fodder yield is 7.3 tons per hectare. It matures in 81 days, resistant to downy mildew, other diseases and insects pests. Recommended for cultivation in Karif season in Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Punjab, Delhi, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. The last pearl millet hybrid is AHB1200 is having high iron 73 ppm. Average grain yield is 32 or 3.2 tons per hectare with 7 tons per hectare store yield. Matures in 78 days. Resistant to downy mildew. Recommended for Karif cultivation in the states of Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Punjab, Delhi, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. The next crop is sorghum for iron and zinc biofortification. The targeted uh, amount of uh, iron and zinc in sorghum is iron 60 ppm and zinc 32 ppm. The germplasm improved are IS5427 with iron content of 61 ppm and zinc of 
57 ppm gk4035 having iron of 44 and zinc 33 ppm csv12 has iron 43 ppm and 22 ppm of zinc fule rohini has 42 ppm iron and 36 ppm zinc pvk801 has 40 ppm iron and 22 ppm zinc csh16 has 34 ppm iron and 19 ppm zinc ecrisat bread biofortified sorghum line icsr14001 with 50% higher iron and zinc than base level outyielded all the entries in the state multi location trials in maharashtra this is superior under on farm testing under testing in aicrp project on sorghum towards its commercialization high iron small millets in finger millet gpu 28 has 69.9 or 70 ppm of iron as high as more than 90 ppm iron was found in kmr 216 br 36 and pr 10-21 in foxtail millet cr 3088 that is surya nadi 3088 has 125 but 129 ppm of iron and as high as 140 ppm uh, iron is found in surya nadi 3088 Surya Nadi three one four two TNA U one eighty six. Little millet. In this OLM two not three has fifty one ppm iron. As high as two fifty ppm iron was found in BL four RLM one eighty six TNA U sixty three and JK eight. In pulses, Posa Agetti Masur in uh, Masur. It's a pure line variety for iron for bio fortification. Contains 65 ppm of iron as compared to 55 ppm iron in popular varieties. The grain yield is 1.3 tons per hectare. Maturity duration is 100 days. Medium seed with orange cotyledon suitable for Kharif. Adapted in Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh. Developed by IRI New Delhi. Next is mustard. Aiming. high aero, low erosic and low glucosinolate content it has pusa mustard 30 has low erosic acid that is less than 2% in oil as compared to more than 40% erosic acid in popular varieties the oil content is 37.7% seed yield is 1.8 tons per hectare maturity duration 137 days suitable for timely sown irrigated condition Adaptation is in Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Madhya Pradesh, and Rajasthan. Developed by ICR Indian Research Institute, New Delhi. Next is Pusa Double Zero Mustard Thirty One. This is also a pure line variety. It is country's first canola quality Indian mustard variety. This has low erosic acid, less than two percent. in oil and glucosinolate that is less than 30 ppm in seed meal as compared to more than 40% erosic acid and more than 120 ppm glucosinolates in popular varieties the oil content is 41% seed yield is 2.3 tons per hectare maturity duration is 142 days suitable for timely sown irrigated conditions and adapted to Rajasthan northern and western plains then Punjab Haryana Delhi western UP plains of Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh this was developed by ICR IRI New Delhi coming to cauliflower in vegetables pusa bet kesari 1 it's a pure line variety country's first bio fortified cauli- cauliflower it contains high beta carotene 8 to 10 ppm in comparison to negligible beta carotin content in popular varieties the curd yield is 40 to 50 tons per hectare adapted to national capital region of delhi developed by uh, iri new delhi potato bhu sona is a pure line variety has 
high beta carotene that is 14 mg per 100 gram content as compared to 2 to 3 mg per 100 gram beta carotene in popular varieties. The tuber aid is around 20 tons per hectare, dry matter 27 to 29 percent, starch is 20 percent, total sugar 2 to 2.4 percent, adaptation to Odisha developed by ICAR Central Tuber Crop Research Institute, Tiruvananthapuram, Kerala. In sweet potato, a pure line variety named Bhu Krishna has high anthocyanin that is 90 mg per 100 gram content in comparison to popular varieties which have negligible anthocyanin content. The tuber yield is 18 ton per hectare, uh, dry matter is 24 to 25.5 percent, starch 19.5 percent, total sugar 1.9 to 2.2 percent, salinity stress tolerance, adaptation to Odisha, developed by Tiruvananthapuram Station of Central Tuber Crop Research Institute, Kerala. Solapur Lal is a hybrid variety of pomegranate has high iron content of 5.6 to 6.1 mg per 100 gram, zinc 0.64 to 0.69 mg per 100 gram and vitamin C 19.4 to 19.8 mg per 100 gram in fresh aerials in comparison to 2.7 to 3.2 mg per 100 gram iron, 0.50 to 0.54 mg per 100 gram of uh, zinc and 14.2 to 14.6 mg per 100 gram of vitamin A respectively in the variety Ganesha. Fruit yield is 23 to 27 tons per hectare. Adaptation is in semi-arid regions of the country developed by National Research Center on Pomegranate Pune. Let us talk about enhancing the nutrition in foods. The approaches followed for this. First one, strategies to alleviate malnutrition. First strategy is growing natural biofortified crops. We have moringa, tamarind, sweet potato, which are naturally biofortified, which can give enormous amount of micronutrients and major nutrients to our body. Making awareness is a major problem as well as strategy. The development of biofortified crops through Mendelian breeding may be QTL and orange sweet potato. Genetic engineering, golden rice was with high provitamin A. Then farming system for nutrition that is FSN, growing naturally available biofortified crops designed to cultivate biofortified crops specified for uh, remedying various micronutrient deficiencies prevalent in a given region. Then genetic gardens of biofortified crops this is for mainly for farmers, different sections based on particular micronutrients like uh, section for vitamin A, iron and iodine sections etc. A new kind of uh, botanical garden with emphasis on biofortified genetic resources. By walking through the garden, farmers can identify the crops they can introduce in their farming system to address specific micronutrient deficiency. This is served both as educational tool and facilitators of nutritional security. This strategy was uh, followed by Swaminathan. The challenges in biofortified crops are like increasing the yield, increasing iron, protein, quality seed production, public awareness, extension services, price advantages, stakeholder industry. Developing biofortified crops is not is not the only aim of uh, uh, breeders, but consumer acceptability and the re without reducing yield is a major challenge with the breeders. Coming to the F World Food Prize uh, laureates in crop biofortification, the first name is in 2000 Vassal and Velegas. These two scientists, the Millennium World Food Prize was jointly awarded to these two 
whose decades of research and leadership in improving the productivity and nutritional content of maize have improved the diets of millenniums of world's most underfed and poorly nourished citizens the development of quality protein maize and advancement of its cultivation around the world have contributed enormously uh, enormously to lives around the globe second in 2016 and red mavanga low and buis let food be the medicine a quote attributed to hippocrates approximately 2400 years ago best captures of ground breaking achievements for which the four distinguished 30th anniversary world food prize laureates are being honored in 2016 the development and imp- implementation of biofortification breeding critical vitamins and micronutrients into staple foods thereby dramatically reducing hidden hunger for millions another personality who uh, strong who is the small, strong supporter from policy makers was in 2006 17 world food prize winner akin bomi adisena he was from nigeria dr adisena the president of african development bank has been a champion of biofortification for many years and was crucial to the adoption and expansion of biofortified crops in his native nigeria when he led his country's agriculture ministry inclusion of biofortified crops in government sponsored schemes are rural transformation projects of niti ayog these are the schemes of india then the second one is national food security mission rashtriya krishi vikas yojana and integrated child development scheme and midday meal program coming to national nutrition strategy nns this was launched by dr swaminathan on september 5th 2017 uh, for niti ayog for proximate proximate determinants of nutrition are drinking water and sanitation food income and livelihood finally health services nutrition strategy framework envisages a kuposhan mukt bharat linked to swachh bharat abhiyan and swasth bharat abhiyan way forward to attain the biofortification high yielding biofortified crops with extension and public awareness and quality seed production lead to nutrition nutritious grains then with premium price and minimum support price it lead to selling in markets buy back policy from farmers field and procurement by government agenda helps in food processing for food processing industry and uh, sfsm rashtriya krishi vikas yojana icds and mid day meal program summarizing the biofortification approach biofortification helps in improved agronomic characteristics higher nutrition concentration improved nutritional status food based strategy complements other interventions biofortification of uh, different crops has been considered as the most cost effective and feasible approach for combining the different micronutrients to combat the malnutrition in different countries as well as india these are the two references from where i have taken some of the slides and the rest of the information hope you liked this video if you liked don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you